So 1950s, uh, M. King Hubbard predicted that we'd reach peak oil in the United States in around 1970, and uh, he's pretty much correct for the lower 48 field oil. Uh, but then we had other discoveries, other kinds of ways of doing oil, so the peak for the United States kept shifting. Of course, we've had oil globally from the Middle East and stuff like that, so the whole concept of peak oil is, uh, well, you know, it's debatable where and when it's going to happen. But I want to start a timeline, so I'm going to share with you my timeline that I'm working on. If you have any ideas, let me know. And this is how I sort of see um, where we're at, where we came from, and where we're at in the peak oil story. Okay, so this is a chart of uh, Hubbard's um, peak oil predictions. Let me just get this a little smaller. So we start from 1900, and the red line is his projection. You can see 1970 it reaches a peak, and it goes down. So U.S. oil did indeed follow exactly what he predicted until around about 1990, um, where fracking or other sort of recovery methods of oil uh, took over. So basically this is fracking, and then fracking really went up in a huge way in the 2010s, like starting around 20, 20, 2008, 2010s went up high. Now, obviously this chart's a little bit old, so it's coming down now, but it's still you know, way above uh, what he expected. One of the issues with fracking is that this is the basically the production curve for for conventional oil, as uh, Hubbard knew it, like this. And fracking a shale well is sort of like this. It has a very high ramp up. You get a lot of oil right away, and then it all comes collapsing down very quickly. And the reason it does that is because, you know, the way it works is you basically pump in a bunch of um, hot steam and sand and chemicals and whatever, and then it fracks the rock, and then the oil comes out, and then you push it out the other end, and obviously you do this all this very quickly. It's not like creating some big, huge reservoir of oil. It's just basically creating this sort of temporary stream of oil that you pull out. And this is... Uh, I mean, to prove that there, because really, I think what we want to understand is this: now that this is declining, there's no new oil to be gotten, right? You've gotten the first easy oil, then you got the difficult oil that's sort of stuck in the rocks, but what's after it, right? You've got the easy oil and the stuck oil, and how do we know that? Well, if we just look at oil tanker capacity, it, they haven't been adding it. So the reason they're not adding it is because there isn't any oil, you know, there isn't a growth of oil to ship, right? I mean, they're adding, you can see here it actually went down with the number of ships, but then it starts going up as the fracking went up. But now that the fracking is going down, uh, the shipbuilding is going down. And these are probably even just replacement ships for over here, These, right? So you can see it in the oil tanker capacity. You can also see it in the added refining capacity, same thing. There's not much refining being added because there just really isn't that much oil. All right. So here's my timeline of extraction improvements. Um, and the, the overview, you know, the executive summary is that we can see into the ground better, we can drill deeper, and we can drill at any angle, and we can force trapped oil gas out of the ground. So in the 1970s, we had computers and sensors improve improved drill head uh, placement, and we begin some hydraulic fracking, uh, fracturing techniques. Then 1975, we got 3D seismic imaging. Then 1977, the Alaska Prudhoe Bay development in the North Sea oil production, of course, uh, near England, that comes online. So that's another boost is the Alaska oil, uh, which I don't believe Hubbard uh, could see. Um, but this is, you know, more difficult oil to, to get. Then in 1980s, we had a floating production storage and offloading of vessels. So basically, you you drill the you'd, you'd bring your drill rig out to sea, and then you'd have an actual storage tanks out there, and then offloading vessels to bring it to shore. So it became more efficient and more economical. And then you had tension leg platforms for deeper, deeper water drilling, coil tubing, CO2 ejection, whatever. But you know there are limits, and that's deep water horizon. Keep that in mind. 1990s, we get 4D seismic time lapse 3D, deep water well tech, horizontal uh, becomes more economically uh, viable. We have multilateral uh, wells, um, so basically multiple um, sort of like um, paths coming out of the same 
bore, bore uh, well bore, you know, sort of like the the, uh, the veins in a tree leaf. Then in the 2000s, we get multi-stage fracking, and that breaks up horizontal well into segments of fracks fractures each one optimally. So that basically means like, let's just say you have a, a horizontal thing like this. And let me see if we can get the, the pen going right here. Is this the pen? No, that's a highlighter. So let's just say you have a, you know, this is your, let's actually go up to the ground. So we have the ground, we have our well. Okay. So we want to frack here, but the you know, the, the, the well the, where the oil is trapped it might be like this, right? So we'd want to say, okay, well, in this thing, we don't want to um, put too much pressure because there's not much oil here. So just put like, you know, a little pressure right here to get the oil. And then we plug this up. We get the oil. And then for this thing, we say, oh, well, okay, for this, there's a lot of oil. So put a lot of pressure right here to get all this oil down. And then we get that oil. We plug this up. And then we go, oh, well, here there's not much again. So we don't want to put too much because we don't want to lose the oil, right? We don't want to make it into a, push it into a gas or just embed it further. So we, we just do a little pressure to get this. We plug this up. And then same thing for here. Now we want a lot of pressure to get it up here. So that's sort of the way that it, um, that, that method uh, works now. Uh, then in 2006, we have the North American shale boom, Barnett, Bakken, and Marcellus, which is you know, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio. Um, and that's a huge amount of gas, too. Uh, so anyway, we have that. And then we have 2010 pad drillings. We have multiple wells from a single location. So basically, like 2016 factory drilling. You know, we have factories. Like, you know, the, the trucks, the equipment. You know, it's just basically a rolling factory. You just bring it to a location and... And boom, like, you know, in a few months or a year or whatever, it's done everything. With, and then it just moves the factory on. Just like you see cranes. You know, it used to be crane, all cranes were sort of custom in the city building these uh, high rises. But now you can see all their cranes are basically commoditized. Um, and they have it down to a science, you know, the ability to move them, put them together, take them down and move them away to the next next building. So that's what's been going on. But I want to point out right now there isn't. So it's 2025, so we have four, nine, it's really like 10 years since, you know, almost 20 years since we've had any really meaningful technology. And then, um, you know, we've run out of uh, places to, uh, we've run out of, yeah, just places that we can, um, uh, we can get the oil. So another way of looking at it is, uh, so in 1970s, a basic computerization and frontier design, frontier region development, offshore capabilities expansion, digital revolution and horizontal drilling, unconventional resource unlocking through multi-stage fracking, um, the efficiency improvements with pad drilling, and then the standardization and industrialization of the process, which is, you know, again, so we're sort of like, technology really isn't improving much in the past 10 years, and there's no new um, resources that I think that we can frack, because even fracking is, you can't frack all oil wells like it's very specific geology so i don't believe you can frack let's say oil wells in the middle east so it's only in the united states and some places where fracking will work all right well that's my timeline uh, as of now hope you enjoyed till later